Thank you for watching Devar Malchus talks from Shabbos, Parshas, Bahar, Bahosai, which blessed the month of Sivan, 5751 by Lubavitcher Rebbe. Here we go with the English translation. It's dedicated to the Rafael Shalem of Ariel David ben Simcha. May it be speedily and immediately, and to all those who need a Rafael Shalem. Okay, here we go on page 313. The concept of Rosh Hodesh, the head of the month of Sivan, which is blessed on this holy Shabbos day in which we bless the new month, is stated explicitly in the Torah in the third month Sivan on this day on Rosh Chodesh. They came to the Sinai Desert. The Sinai Desert is connected to Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah, Sinai. Moses received the Torah from Sinai and the Sinai Desert. As the exposition of our sages, it was given in the desert. It is an ownerless area so that whoever wants to accept it shall come and receive it. And therefore, when they came to the Sinai Desert on Rosh Chodesh Sivan, the appropriate place for Matan Torah, the receiving of the Ten Commandments, the phenomenon of Matan Torah began. Immediately after Rosh Chodesh, Moshe began to occupy with them the concerning the receiving of the Torah. And in the wording of the Midrash, Hashem said, Indeed, now it is time that I will give them my Torah. And this is emphasized in the Torah reading near the holiday of the giving of the Torah as known rule that we always read Parsha of Bamidbar Sinai before Shavuos, which we begin during Mincha of this holy Shabbos. Since the Midbar, since Midbid, Midbid, Midbar Sinai, the Sinai Desert, which the Jewish people reached on Rosh Chodesh Sivan, is the appropriate place for the giving of the Torah. And may we explain the content Sinai Desert, the desert specifically in connection with the giving of the Torah. Desert, Makum ha Beker, of the place that has no ownership, not the ownership of an individual, not the ownership of the public, as in the case of a public domain, a domain that is owned by the public. And being that it has no ownership over anyone who wants to come and acquire it, whoever wants to receive it can come and receive it. And seemingly, the giving of the Torah to the Jewish people is not in the manner that Hashem removed his ownership from the Torah, his Torah, and made it free and available for everyone, namely that it became like something that has no ownership over it, that every person can come and acquire it through an action that acquires possession, rather than a manner And he gave us his Torah, namely the, the Torah is in the possession of all Jewish people without needing an action to own it. Each and every Jew and Jewish Jewess from old to young, including a baby that was just born, and due to him being part of the con con congregation of Yaakov. Indeed, it inherits everything. The entire Torah, as the verse says, Moshe commanded us the Torah. It is an inheritance for every one for the congregation of Yaakov. And based on this, we must understand the reason why the connection of the Torah to all the Jewish people that transpires on Rosh Chodesh Sivan, indeed, it is the time that I shall give them my Torah, is emphasized in the fact that on this day they came to the Sinai Desert, an ownerless place, and not a place that is that is in the ownership of the, all Jewish people in a public domain or like, like the Torah was given to the possession of all the Jewish people. On the other hand, we must understand the reason why the concept of a desert in the third month on this very day, they came to the Sinai Desert, is emphasized in the Parsha of Bamidbar, which we read right before Shavuos, and not in the Parsha that we read on Shabbos, which blesses the day that they came to Sinai Desert. Parshas Bahar Bakut Osai, as the calendar layout of lot of years, as this year outside the Holy Land, they are connected and read as one Parsha. And by way of introduction, that the reading of the Parsha of Midbar before Shavuos is not due to the connection of the Sinai Desert to the giving of the Torah, rather also and mainly because Ezra instituted that the Jewish people read the passage of curses in Leviticus before Shavuos, and the fact that we add and read also Midbar Sinai before Shavuos is in order to read the curses in Bekutosai before reading Shavuos. 
or before Shavuos rather, namely the Parsha that we essentially read before Shavuos instituted by Ezra is Parshas Bakuto Sai. And in some years it's Bahar Bakuto Sai. And the connection of the giving of Bahar Bakuto Sai to the giving of the Torah is emphasized in, name, in the name of the Parsha, Bahar Sinai, the mountain on which the Torah was given, and Bakuto Sai, an idiom of Hakika, Hakiko, engraving which alludes to the engraving letters of the tablets, which includes the entire Torah, the written Torah and the oral Torah, and even what a veteran student will innovate. And in the content of the Parsha, most, both in the beginning of, and Hashem spoke to Moshe on Har Sinai, saying, and the land should rest a Shabbos for Hashem. What is the emphasis of the connection of Shemitah to Mount Sinai? Weren't the mitzvot said at Sinai only just a as Shmita, all its only just as Shmita, all its general laws, detail and fine details were given at Sinai. So too all the mitzvahs, their general laws, details and fine details were given at Sinai, as well as its culmination. These are the mitzvahs that Hashem commanded Moses to the Jewish people on Har Sinai, and we must understand the reason for the fact that this parsha, which we read on the holy Shabbos from which Rosh Chodesh Sivan is blessed, upon which they came to the Sinai Desert, it does not mention the aspect of the Sinai Desert, as the Parsha of Big Bigbar, which we read in Mincha, rather, on the mountain of Sinai. And may we explain the first, and may we explain first the relation and significance of the place in the world in which the Torah was given, on Mount Sinai, which is the Sinai Desert, for seemingly being that the effect of the Torah is the whole entire world, why is such a great importance, a significant place, why is it of such great importance, the specific place in the world in which Torah was given? And may we say that choosing of a specific place in the world, that it's befitting the, t the giving of the Torah, emphasizes the goal and purpose of the effect of the Torah on the world, as we shall explain. And this would be understood based on the explanation of the connection of the Torah to the world, which emphasized the words of the Mishnah in the tractate Avos that we study on this holy Shabbos. Within ten utterances, the world was created. As it says in the Zohar, the verse says ten, ten each spoon of holy shekels. Ten utterances for the word, for the work of the creation of the Mishnah states, with ten utterances, the world was created. Ten utterances for giving of the Torah, namely the Ten Commandments. Since the world was not created only because of the Torah, and as long as the Jewish people are occupied in the Torah, the world endures. If not, for in my covenant, day and night, the law of heaven and earth, I would have not placed, and concludes that through this it attains peace. Similar to the words of our sages, the entire Torah was given to make peace in the world. This means that through the ten utterances of the giving of the Torah, the Ten Commandments, we reveal the Ted Arnardses in the work of the creation, namely that the world, the work of the creation is not an existence on its own that hides, moreover, conceals godliness, for its entire existence is only the Ten Utterances, which through them there was the creation of the world from literally nothing. In six days of creation and his goodness, he renews every constant. He renews every day constantly the work of the creation. For had the letters from the ten utterances gone away for a moment, heaven forbid, the entire creation would have literally, would have returned to literally nothingness, just as before the six days of creation, literally. And more specifically, as the continuation of the words of the Mishnah, with ten utterances the world was created. And what does this teach us? Indeed, with one utterance alone, they could have been created, only in order to punish the wicked who destroy the world that was created with ten utterances, and to give good reward to the righteous who fortify the world that was created with ten utterances. And by way of preference, the known question being that one with one utterance, the world could have been created. Why should the punishment and reward for the world was created with ten utterances when the world is only worth one utterance? If he wants to add more utterances, it is not the wicked person or the righteous person, the one be held responsible for this. And may we say the explanation of this in the creation of the world, there are actually two manners, with one utterance and with ten utterances. With one utterance, the manner was created, something matter from literally nothing, the primary matter exist, material existence. 
<clears throat> and which is equal. which is equal in all creations of the world. And with tad utterances, the form was created, revealed of all the details of the creations that are different from one another through the divisions of the ten utterances, including also the combination and exchanges of letters that roll about in the 231 gates of front and back, as it says in Sefer Yetzirah, which through this all the numerous specific creations of the world were created. And the difference between them with the creation, with one utterance, the creating of something, matter from literally nothing, being the creation of something from nothing is not a matter of close. And the meaning, and being vested rather in the manner of being removed and separate, which is not revealed in the creations in their details and significance. The emphasis is on the capability of Hashem. With one utterance, the world could be created. And that is in his power and capability to create something from literally nothing. The power of the existence of Hashem and not the existence of the creation, which is, in essence, is after it was created, literally nothing. And its existence is only the revelation of the power and capability of Hashem in creating something from literally nothing. And in the creation with ten utterances, all the mirrored details detailed creations and the division between them, each and every one with its unique characteristics and main emphasis is on the existence of the world. With ten utterances, the world was created. That its creation in a matter and specific content and significance was given to each and every creation that was created with ten utterances, which correspond to the ten sephiroth, ten general content virtues, which include all matter that have importance and significance. And since the ten utterances of the world of creation correspond to the ten utterances of the giving of the Torah, it is understood that the two aspects of the ten utterances and what utterance is in the world are also in the Torah. At the giving of the Torah, it says, Hashem spoke one, and I heard it as two. Namely, in the Torah, there are two aspects. One, one utterance as it, from the perspective of Hashem, spoke. And just as Hashem is one, so too the wisdom of Hashem Torah is one, namely all the matters of the Torah are one in essence. The wisdom of Hashem and the Torah of Hashem are truly one. And two, to the extent of the division into ten commandments, ten utterances from the perspective of the person that the world I heard, namely that the wisdom of Hashem descend and vest in a manner of man and the world which are in a manner of vested division ten commandments, which include 613 mitzvahs corresponding to 248 limbs and 365 sinews of a person, a small world, and likewise in the world in the simple sense in order to accomplish that the virtue and significance of the details of the creation of the world should be utilized to, should be utilized and be according to Torah. And therefore, through the one utterance that is in the Torah, which is emphasized in the study of Torah through the preference of Blessing first on the Torah, which is a phenomenon of submission to the giving of the Torah Hashem, namely that it is evident in the Torah, not that much the division of the details of the laws that discuss the matter of the world, rather the point of unity that it is the wisdom of Hashem. Hashem spoke one. We reveal in the world the one utterance, namely that it is evident in the world, not the division of the details of the creation according to their specific qualities, rather the power of the essence of Hashem that creates the world from nothing to something. And through the ten utterances, that is the Torah, which emphasizes, which emphasized in the number, uber, in the numerous di diverse laws of the Torah that are vested in the matters of the world, including all your actions shall be for the sake of heaven, and in all your ways you shall know him. We reveal in the world the ten utterances, namely that it is evident in the world that the content and significance it has in the content and significance of the ten utterances of Hashem corresponding to the ten heavenly sephiroth and completeness of holiness. And in a slightly other words, the effect of the one utterance is the nullification of the world, which on its own, if not for the power of creation, is literally nothing. Elevating from below to above, from existence to nullification of the existence, and the effect of the ten utterances is that the existence of the world be permeated with the completeness of holiness, drawing from above to below. And each one has what the other does not. 
the advantage of the revelation of the ten utterances that vest in the matter of the world in a matter of division and correlation with their specific character, that it permeates the framework of the world. However, the revelation is only of a level of godliness that relates to world and not the level of godliness that is above the world. The advantage of the revelation of the one utterance is that the above the division of the matters of the world, that the level of godliness that is above the world is revealed. However, this revelation does not permeate the framework of the world since the virtue and significance of the details of the creation due to their unique makeup and characteristic is not evident. And on the contrary, on their own, they are completely nothingness. And the true completeness is the combining of both of them together. That also, on the level of godliness that is above the world, one utterance is drawn, revealed, and permeates the division of the details of the creations, ten utterances. And through this, the purpose of the creation Hashem desired to have for himself, blessed be he, a dwelling in the lowest realm, is completed, a dwelling in which the dweller is revealed in his entire essence, namely not only the level of godliness that is revealed, that is re relative to the world, rather also at the level of godliness that is above the world, including the essence of Hashem, the level of the true united of Hashem, the true uni unity of, of Hashem, one utterance, and the dwelling is the lowest realms, that the revelation of the essence of Hashem is drawn and permeates the existence of the lowest realms as they are divided and numerous from the perspective of their makeup and character, ten utterances. And this, the effect of the Torah on the world of the one utterance and the ten utterances, is emphasized also in the preparation for the giving of the Torah through the counting of the Omar from Pesach to till Shavuot. The giving of the Torah comes after the preface of the Exodus from Egypt. The king of all kings, Hashem, his honorable self, was revealed to them and redeemed them so that when you take the nation out from Egypt, the nation will serve Hashem on this mountain. And since the intention of the giving of the Torah is the, up, is the union of the upper realms and the lowest realm, the upper realm shall descend to the lowest realm, and the lowest realm shall ascend to the upper realm. And in a true union is not the loftiest of the upper realm is diminished, for then it is not upper in its true meaning, and that the lowest of the low realm is diminished, for then it is not low in its true meaning, rather that the upper realm in its loftiest unites with the lowest realm in its lowest, Indeed, this is accomplished through the preparation of the counting of the Omer. The content of you shall count for yourself from the day following Shabbos seven weeks, they shall count fifty days in the service of man, that the day following Shabbos, the day following Yom Tov, begins the service of drawing the revelation of essence of Hashem, His honorable self that is above the division of the world, the one utterance that it shine, and you shall count as an idiom of Sephir, Bright light and revelation, and the detail of the division of the attributes, seven weeks, seven times seven, which is the person that in the world, ten utterances, until the manifestation of they should count, also an idiom of the revelation in the permanent in them, the revelation of the fiftieth day, the fiftieth gate that is above forty nine gates, which are connected to the world and within the fiftieth itself, not only the lower level that is relative to the 49 gates, which for this reason it is included in them 50 days, rather also the higher level that is completely above 49 gates, the one utterance that is drawn and revealed on the 50th day. And may we add that the calendar layout of this year, that the beginning of the Sephirat is on Motzi Shabbos, the day following Shabbos, also in a literal sense, and its end is on the day of Shabbos, weeks that began with Sunday and include with Shabbos, complete as the day of days of creation, complete within complete. It is emphasized even more that the revelation of his honorable self permeates the framework of the work, world, complete weeks as days of creation. And with extra emphasis on the special separate counting of Rosh Chodesh Sivan in the third month, on this day they came to the Sinai Desert. In the seventh week, on the third day of it, Rosh Chodesh Sivan, it is as if the whole week was through the complete preparation for the giving of the Torah through the counting of the Omer. The third day of the seventh week, the 45th day, is after 45 days of counting the Omer are complete, which they are the main service in counting the Omer is refining the attributes because 44 days are the aspect of nourishing, analogous to the milk that makes the limb of the toddler grow, and the growth of the attributes of the animal soul, and elevating them through drawing forth the faculties of intellect and nourishing. In the 44 days of counting the Omer, 
analogous to blood, dam, 44, that becomes cloudy and becomes milk, this is the preparation for the tasting of the grain, which is the phenomenon of the giving of the Torah, which is compared to bread on the holiday of Shavuos. And since the main service of refinement of the details of the attributes is complete through the revelation of the light, which is on a comparative level to the division of the details of attributes, 10 utterances, we become prepared to receive the revelation of the light of the 50th day, which transcends the division of 49 days, the one utterance through the preference of the ten, of the submission of Rosh Chodesh, the diminishment of the moon, until it becomes the form of a dot, which then there can be a complete revelation on this day of the 50th day. And a foretaste of this along, and a foretaste of this, also on Lag Omar, Hod within Hod, which this Sephiroth is the end and completion of the Sephiroth with regard to the main attributes which are called the body, since from the level of Hod within Hod, the lower ends of the level called body and the main part of the attributes and the beginnings and the level of flow forth to outside the body and therefore there shines the revelation, the super, the supernal light that is above the division of the details of the attributes through the preference of the submission of the light of Hodua, recognition. With this, the phenomenon of Hod within Hod, hence the ex exposing of the inner dimension of the Torah is accomplished on Lag Bomer. And may we add in the connection of Rosh Chodesh Sivan to the giving of the Torah, also due to the counting of the Omer of Rosh Chodesh Sivan itself, the 45th day of Sefer Omer, which the number 45 is numerical value of Adam, the letters Aleph, Aleph Dam, Based on what is known, the Torah is compared to Dam blood, which draws vitality to all limbs equally, and is also called Adam. This is the Torah Adam, Dam plus an Aleph, which we may say that Dam, which spreads out and is drawn in all the limbs of the body, alludes to the ten ordinances of the Torah, the division of the details of the laws of the Torah, and Adam, Aleph, Dam, alludes to the drawing of one utterance, which is in the Torah that transcends the division of the details of the laws of the Torah. Hashem spoke one, which this phenomenon is accomplished through the preference and submission to the service of prayer. And may we say that the phenomenon is hinted to also in the Parsha that we read in the Torah on the day of Shabbat, which, from which is based on Rosh Hodesh Siva, the Parsha of Lahar Bakrit Osai. Lahar on the mountain, greatness and highness, and its mountain is considered growth within the category of inanimate, alludes to the service and the matter of division into details, ten utterances, which in this is emphasized the movement of growth from level to level. They will go from strength to strength. And the Sai, an idiom for hakiko, engraving, engraved, like the letters of the tablets, which are as such that they are engraved and are the same part of itself, alludes to the essential point that transcends the division into detail. One utterance which is reached through submission that is above comprehension, a salute I have made, a decree, I have decreed, and you have no permission to wonder about it. And the union of them together that we read, Bahar Bakuta Sai, and one Shabbos, for seven people called to the Torah, and one of them, the fourth, connect both of them through the blessing before the reading of the end of the Parsha of Bahar, and after the reading of the beginning of the Parsha of Bakuta Sai, through a level that is higher than both of them, denotes also that the level, uh, denotes that also the division to details, Bahar is permeated by the essential point that is above division, Bahurosai. And may we add, the union of the two extremes is also hinted in the Parsha itself, Bahar Sinai. The numerical value of Sinai is the same as Sulam, ladder, which unites above and below in both matters of traveling, which are spoken about in the Parsha of Bukhosai, and I will stroll, in plural, two travels going from above to below, Torah that was given from Sinai and going from below to above, prayer, the latter symbolizing prayer, as emphasized in the ascent of Moshe to Mount Sinai, both for the purpose of receiving the Torah as well as for the purpose of praying for the Jewish people, which the general difference between drawing below Torah, which is studying with comprehension and emphasized on the person, and evaluating to above, and elevating to above, prayer, know before whom you stand, nullification of oneself is similar to the difference between ten utterances and one utterances, that the 
through 10 utterances, the drawing below is accomplished, and through one utterance, the submission and elevating above is accomplished. And likewise, and even more in the Parsha of Bamidbar, which is, be, which is beginning, which it's beginning, we read it, Mincha of Shabbos, blessing the month of Sivan, and the entire Parsha from its beginning till its end, on Shabbos before Shavuos, Mid Midbar is an idiom for Dibor speech, which alludes to the speech of Torah and also speech of prayer. The two motion of drawing below and of elevating above, which is similar to the ten utterances and one utterance. Furthermore, mainly, Mid Midbar, an idiom of Dibor speech, with the addition of men hints to the person who is speaking, Midabar, the source of speech and its meaning regarding Torah and emphasis to the virtue and significance of the existence of the person is speaking words of Torah to the degree that whoever reads and studies Hashem reads and studies opposite him. Namely, the main thing is the speech of the person and Hashem reads and studies opposite him, after him. The level of the Torah that is revealed to the level of the person, ten utterances, and midbar, an idiom of midabar, having a uh, herak, mem, that the speech on its own, namely that he does not have his own speech, as in the case of midabar, having a sheva mem, rather as a matter that was already spoken, namely that the speech is in a matter of submission to the word of Hashem that is speaking in him as in the speech of the prayer, which is beginning as Hashem opened my lips and my mouth will recite your praises. The verse which is an, which is part of the Amida prayer. And similarly in the Torah, and the study which is the height of the submission in the manner of my tongue shall re re reiterate your words, as in one who repeats after one reading, the level of the Torah that is above man, one utterance. And the level of both of them as one is through a level that is higher than both of them, the phenomenon of desert in good sense, a land no man settled there completely above, completely above the level of person, which due to this level, the union of them is accomplished, and the one utterance shall be drawn and permeated, the ten utterances, and also the level of the Torah that is above man, the level of my tongue shall reiterate your words, shall draw down and permeate the existence of the person through Torah study with comprehension to the degree of adding innovation, insights in Torah, which in this is emphasized even more the phenomenon of whoever reads and studies Hashem reads and studies opposite him, that the person innovates new insights in Torah and Hashem repeats and says the innovative insight that the person innovated. And may we say that since the order of the service also in the preparation for the giving of the Torah in the Parshas that we read before the giving of the Torah is from the S, from easy to hard. Therefore, in the Parsha of Bahar Bakuto Sai, we read the Shabbos before Rosh Chodesh Sivan, before the blessing of the new month, is emphasized mainly that there are two extremes in Parshas Bahar, existence and in the division into details, and in the Parsha of Bakuto Sai, submission and the point that is above division into details. Moreover, the beginning and end of Parsha Bakuto Sai is with the idea of the mountain of Sinai and not the desert of Sinai, mountain specifically which emphasized the matter of existence and division in the details. And in the Parsha of Bamidbar that we read Torah Shabbos before the giving of the Torah, the emphasis is mainly in the union of the two extremes through the level that is above both of them. Midbar desert with no person settles there is explained above. Based on this, we can also explain the reason for the giving of the Torah in the desert, an ownerless place, specifically as emphasized in Rosh Chodesh Sivan when they came to the desert of Sinai in the reading of Shabbos before Shabbos in the Parshas of Bambidbar, we explained above that Bambidbar is an ownerless place, namely a place that has no ownership over it, not as a public domain, a domain that is in the not as a public domain, a domain that is in the possession of the public. And the explanation of what this denotes regarding Torah, may we say, a public domain alludes to the level of the Torah that is on a level similar to that of and is related to the public. 600,000 Jews is a public domain, which 600,000 Jews pass through, corresponding to 600 letters of the, 600 letters of the Torah. 600,000 letters of the Torah, and therefore it is the possession of the Jewish people in their first place in a matter of an inheritance, an inheritance to the congregation of Yaakov, the level of the Torah that has the relation to the word of the ten utterances. And desert, an ownerless place, alludes to the level of the Torah which is completely above relation to the world. The Torah and Hashem are one. The one utterance that is 
on its own has no relation to the possession of the public. Rather, Hashem releases ownership from it, so to say, and through this gives permission and the right to acquire it, that whoever wants to receive it shall come and receive it. And therefore, the Torah was given to a desert in an ownerless place in order to allude to the fact that the Torah, the true completeness of receiving the Torah is when we receive also the love of Torah that is completely above relation to the world, that in order that we be capable of receiving it, Hashem has to give it an ownerless place specifically. And may we say that the true completeness of the giving of the Torah in an ownerless place will be in a time to come. For new Torah insights will come forth from me, from me, the Torah of Hashem, literally, that is completely above relation to the world, and therefore its being given to the world in its is through its leaving coming forth from me. And it leaves, so to say, the possession of Hashem who releases the possession of it so that whoever wants to receive it shall come and receive it. And based on this, we may explain also the continuation of the verse in the third month on this very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. And therefore he, the Jewish people, camped there and he camped in individual terminology as one man with one heart being the Jewish people hated arguments and loved peace and they camped as one indeed. It is the time to give them my Torah. For in order to receive the level of the Torah that is above relation to the world and a person which is given an ownerless place, a person needs to leave his own existence through him making himself an ownerless desert. Complete submission and his submission is expressed first and foremost in the negating of arguments and love and peace. Since the reason for the argument is feeling oneness. And through this one becomes befitting and prepared to receive the level of the Torah that is beyond relation to the world, which is given in an ownerless place. And although the preparation for giving of the Torah is in the desert through submission, negating of one's existence, yet at the manner of all who want to receive it shall come and receive it, specifically the person acceptance, not as the common terminology, the giving of the Torah given in the desert, which is this in the emphasize and also the level of the Torah which is above the existence of the person permeates and becomes his existence through study and comprehension to the degree of innovating new insight in the Torah, the strength of the existence of holiness. We may say that the two extremes, ultimate submission and strong existence, are emphasized also in the reading of Parsha Midbar and the Shabbos before Shavuos and its beginning in Mincha of this Shabbos, namely of Parsha Midbar name so since it began and he spoke in the desert of sinai denotes the height of submission like this desert that everyone treads on it and the content of the parsha reunion regarding the con counting of the jewish people which because of this the entire sefer is called humash Kadim, denotes the strong existence something that is counted does not get nullified and the great significance due to their being beloved to him he counts them consistently of the jewish people in general and of each and every jew and jewish and we add that these two extremes are emphasized also in the two reasons for reading the parsha of the midbar and shabbos before shavuos to allude to the giving of the torah in the desert and the separate be separate and to separate between the curses and parshas bekuto sai and shavuos in it hinting the giving of the Torah in a desert, the phenomenon of submission emphasized the one utterance, and he makes himself like an onerous desert, as explained above. And in the separation between the curses and the parshas of Bakuto, Sai, and Shavuos, the aspect of existence is emphasized ten utterances for the need of the separation simply is because the Torah is the source of all the blessings, as emphasized in the Torah's beginning with the letter base acronym for bracha, beginning with the most essential bracha emphasized in the shape of the letter base, which is closed on all sides and open on one side, which alludes to the world was created by Hashem in a manner of being surrounded on all three sides for the northern side, in order that a person, aside for the northern side, in order that a person through his service will complete and close up the northern side, which in this emphasize the virtue of the person, the strong existence, which through him specifically is in the world made to be surrounded from all four sides with no room to breach, as in the shape of a mem, to the vast sovereignty, a closed mem in the middle of the world, which alludes to redemption, which is accomplished through the work of a man in drawing the revealed of Aleph, Aluf, master of the universe in the middle of Gula, exile, making Gola, redemption. And may we add 
Or may we connect the above said with an instruction regarding action in a timely manner to gather groups every Shabbos to gather in synagogues and study halls, halls to teach Torah in public, including also in a matter of establishing many students, which if this is said regarding every Shabbos, most certainly on Shabbos, from which the holy day of the giving of the Torah is blessed to arouse and cause eagerness in every place that during the reading of the Ten Commandments, the holiday of the giving of the Torah, all the Jewish children, also the very small children, even the babies in the crib, should be in the synagogue as they are the guarantors for the receiving of the Torah. Our children are our guarantors. And all this with emphasis. The two extremes is submission and existence. The one utterance and ten utterance is mentioned above. On one hand, the aspect of submission which is emphasized in the unity with many Jewish people to gather gatherings, and especially through the unity of all the Jewish people, men and women and children, during the reading of the Ten Commandments, namely that the unity is not only with people who he relates to that are on his level in Torah study to gather gatherings, to teach Torah to them in public, rather also with small and very small children, that they all come together into the synagogue and ultimately the ultimate self-submission, and on the other hand, together with the submission of the union with many Jewish people, also the strong existence of each and every Jew on his own, as expressed in the counting, is emphasized that each and every one of them receives the Torah and studies it and comprehends it with the understanding to the degree of innovating new insights in Torah, each and every person befitting his level, and may, and may it be said by the will of Hashem, and this is the main thing, that the resolution to add is the unity of the Jewish people, as in preparation of the giving of the Torah, they hated arguments and loved peace, will hasten the accomplishment, immediate nullification of the exile, which is caused by the opposite of love of Jews. And when the cause is gone automatically, the result is no more. And immediately it is true that the complete redemption through Mashiach, which then there will be a completeness of the phenomenon of the giving of the Torah, Torah as new will come forth from me, and simply that even before the time holiday of the giving of the tar Torah, and before Rosh Chodesh Siva, and presently on Shabbos Parshas, Bechar Bakutosai, may we merit the fulfillment of the promise, and then relate the fact that the beginning of the Parshas of Bechar, when you will come into the land, and the beginning of Parsha of Bukutosai, and the land will give its produce, and the trees of the field will give its fruit, in the future land of Eretz Israel will yield pastries and linen clothes, and barren trees in the future will produce fruits. And in continuation of this, we come to the book of Numbers, the counting of the Jewish people, and each and every Jew, similar to what is written, and you will be collected one by one, O Jewish people, and all of them as one become one existence of a great congregation, and will be the tenth counting, together with the tenth song and the tenth red heaven, the tenth shall be holiness, through the King Mashiach, may he be revealed speedily amen, so that we will, so that it, so may it be the will of Hashem that literally immediately we see that the Mashiach is already among us and that everyone shows his finger and said, here he, the King Mashiach, has already came. And in continuation to this, we come to the holiday of giving of the Torah at the height of perfection in our holy land in Yerushalayim, the holy city, on the holy mountain, in the base of Migdash, and the holy of holies, in which is found in the whole ark of the tablets, which are Bakutosai engraved letters. Torah as new will come forth from me, the Torah teachings of Mashiach to a whole nation, including even the teaching of Hashem himself, from me literally, as the verse says, a person will not teach his friend anymore, for all will know me, and your master will be no more hidden from you, and your eyes will see your master literally immediately. Thank you for watching.